what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week, we do have a whole lot of things that you guys may want to take a look at. First off, last time we talked about Blender, we were looking at 3.0, the most recent release, most stable recent release I must say. This release comes with a huge set of features and for those who would like to check it out, we already covered a video about it and also one for the asset browser. So in case you'd like to read more about this, you want to see the Blender 3.0 in action, link to this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Meanwhile, there's been a couple of works behind the scene for Blender 3.1. Just in case you had no idea, Blender 3.1 the Alpha has been running and it now has a new update for Mac OS users. At this point, the Apple Silicon is now available for 3.1 and also for 3.0. So just in case you're making use of Mac OS and you like to make use of the Metal GPU backend for Cycles, Cycles now has that embedded. Now, it also makes sense that Metal GPU rendering is currently supported on Apple M1 computers running Mac OS 2 and the implementation is still pretty early so performance optimization and support for AMD and Intel GPU is currently under development. So for those who would like to test this, maybe you want to grab it, you want to play with it, you can simply go ahead and check this out. And when we talk about things that you might want to check out, you might also want to confirm a couple of new updates that is now available in 3.1. There is a whole lot of updates available for 3.1 now and most of them gets to do with node. First off, we do have a generalized compare node. This replaces the compare float node with a generalized compare node. There is also a beautiful rename curve parameter add index on spline. We also do have a remove unnecessary copy when replacing data node and you can also find an improved memory reuse in procedural executors. Of course, these nodes are existing and for those who like to look at this, you might want to get Blender 3.1. And while we talk about Blender 3.1, let's actually take a look at some of the implementation of some nodes that exist right now. So there's a a couple of uh, cool nodes that I would like to look at and one of them is the dual mesh. Now I do not know you know what this would be used for but of course it looks interesting so if we go ahead and type in what dual world mesh you would notice that we have a dual mesh node here and uh, what this node does is to every point let's just go ahead and rewire this so what this node does is to every point where you have a face it replaces that with a vertex so you can see that here and uh, you know for most of you guys that might be saying all right, how does that work? Can you try that with a cylinder? Yes, you can. So you can also throw in a simple cylinder like so, and you can see the kind of results you get. And by default, you notice your cylinder should look like this, but now, you know, it replaces all these places with vertices and you know, that becomes a vertex and all of here actually collapses. And that is why you're having something like that. And you might want to also try that with a cone. And for a cone, what happens is it actually splits it, you know, turns it upside down, turns it over the head. So let's go ahead and grab that again, cone, and the cone comes out and we can just link this one all the way there and you can see what we have. There's also a new one called a domain size, which is also nice. And of course, for those who are into scattering stuff, there is also a new one called a geometry to instance node. So let's actually take a look at that. So if I go over and type in the word geometry to instance, you can see that we have the geometry to instance right there. And of course, if we go in and get an instance, we can get an instance on points, which is also pretty nice. And we can use this to do some uh, beautiful stuff. So you remember we had this cone, so I'm just gonna link that there and also link the cylinder right over there. And what can we do with this? What we can do with this is this simple, let's get a grid, drop this grid over here. I'm also gonna just wire this grid all the way to this point so we can see it. Let's increase the size of this grid and also increase it this much. I'm just going to select all of these and let's get these to, what do you say, four, and we can get that as it is. And with all this here, if we wire this over to this instance, and then we set this as the points, let's just get that there, set this as a point, and then connect this right here. You can see what we have. By now, you probably will be saying, you know, this looks like the join node. What's the big difference? It isn't. It isn't the join node because at this point, if you click on pick instance, you can see that this gets instanced. You probably wouldn't be seeing much stuff because we have only two. So I'm just gonna go in and get a star, for example, and drop that star right around there. And once you do that, you can start seeing some stuff. Now, for those who would be doubting this, let's throw in that join geometry so that you guys can also see this in action. So we have one here, one over here, and uh, we also have these other one right here. So let's link that up. And you will notice we don't have, you know, we don't have the same effect. So let's link this up here and you can see it. 
So depending on the number of things that you get to throw in, you can get some very desirable results with it. So let's also add a simple cube. So I'm just going to get that cube in, click, click and drag and join that. And of course you can start seeing all of this. And for those who might be saying, you know, why not just simply shell out the star? You can. So if you convert curve to mesh, so I'm just going to get this curve to mesh, which is a CTM and we can link that up and also get a simple circle. And you know, with a simple circle like this, we can also link this right over there and you can start playing with all the points to get some very nice geometry out of it. And while we talk about things that you might want to get the most out of, there's also another pretty cool node known as the Mesh Island node. Now this node is a field input that outputs a separate index for each Mesh Island. And if you're looking for more nodes updates and you would like to read on this, there is actually a new update that deals with the geometry node submodule meeting. So this deals with all of the conversations around the geometry node, the implementation, the walkthrough and also the developments to come. So if you are into this, you might also want to come through and read up on all of this and see all of the amazing things that the folks at Blender Foundation are working on. You might also want to take a look at the animation and rigging module meeting that is also right here. And the meeting deals with short-term goals for animation and rigging. You might also want to read more about the patch review and decision time, animation UX demo, and also a couple more things that they're looking at for the next meeting. So tons of good ideas here, and you can actually come over and read up on all of this and get informed. And while we talk about things that you might want to read up and get informed about, the folks at Facebook currently known as Meta, they are doing something pretty nice. Now, if you would like to read more about this one, I'm definitely going to put this link in the description. And it has to do with improving the real-time rendering of dynamic digital characters in cycles. Now, if you remember, sometime last year, we got to see that Facebook joined the Blender Development Fund. And the main aim of joining this is to support the development of cycles. The team at Facebook have actually come up with three main areas of collaboration that deals with the scene update optimization, adding a native procedural API alongside with an alembic procedural to accelerate baking geometry animation loaded, to accelerate big geometry animation loading and also real-time playback. There is also a third one that deals with a better BSDF model. Now, this is a, it's a pretty cool stuff. It has a whole lot of potential and they've gone through to explain how this will better the use of cycles. When you're working in cycles, cycles actually stores the data of a whole scene in a unified or a specific buffer. And every time you make a simple change, these buffers get destroyed and then recreated. And these involve copying all the data back into the buffer and then onto the device before a rendering actually ensues. And this is time consuming and that is one of the things they're looking at fixing. So there's a whole lot of write-up about how they would go ahead and fix this. And at the same time, they're also looking at another optimization plan that deals with the BVH. And for those who have no idea what the BVH is, it's actually bounding volume hierarchy in ray tracing acceleration as it simply uses a tree based acceleration structure. And this is also something that they are looking at. And for sure, with the BVH, objects are kept in the memory and only reconstructed if the topology of the object simply changes. Otherwise, the BVH is simply modified to take into account the new vertex position. And this will definitely change how cycles will perform over time. So it makes sense to see that the folks at Meta are actually investing into this. There's also the procedural system that has to do with how things would work in terms of alembic. So the procedurals are nodes that can generate other nodes in the scene just before rendering. At the same time, the Alembic procedural allows the loading of Alembic archive files natively. At the same time, the Alembic procedural also has its own memory cache to preload data from the disk. And this would limit the cost of imputing and outputting stuff and all that operation that you get to do with the Alembic file. Now, these things make sense. And if you're thinking about checking out the graph that deals with this, you might also want to come through and look at it. And you can see this is what the performance looks like. You know, the Blender Alembic playback, you can see how much time it takes compared to the Cycles Alembic procedural. And you can also see the total time, way more than half, I would say. And it is just impressive. The statistics for the geometry that was used is found here. And this is beautiful. Moving forward, they are looking at improving the BSDF. And this BSDF has to do with the physical correctness of cycles when rendering a particular material or a surface. And in the recent contribution, we did see an improvement to the subsurface scattering. And they're also looking at better ways to simulate the interaction between light and also skin. So I do love all of this. And for those who like to read more about the future collaboration, you can come through and check this out. Now, one of the coolest things about all of this 
is there's a paper that has been written about this. It's a very short paper and it will be presented at SIGGRAPH. SIGGRAPH Asia is coming and is running from the 14th to the 17th of December 2021. And I am very excited about the fact that the developers from both Apple and also Facebook are not just funding Blender, but on the other hand, they are also investing research and trying to make Blender better. And while we talk about companies jumping into the Blender Development Fund, we do have a new update and also a new member. Decentraland has now joined the Blender Development Fund as Patreon members, and it is the very first crypto-based platform to support the Blender Development Fund. And the funding is to support the Blender core development and uh, some of the things that we've already talked about here. And for those who haven't seen Decentraland, it is actually a cryptocurrency-based platform where you can create, explore, and also trade your art piece. Now, this is based off the Ethereum blockchain, and I do know that most of you guys do have mixed reactions about crypto, but either way, Decentraland is now part of the Blender Development Fund, and this brings more resources to the development of Blender. And while we talk about resources, let's take a look at AlterMesh. So AlterMesh is something that I think you should get if you're into geometry nodes. We've already talked about this. We did an extensive video about it. And for those who've been thinking about how to move the geometry node, procedural stuff, everything you've made in 3.0 over to Unreal Engine, this tool is right here for you. So if you would like to get it, it's totally for free. You can go ahead and grab it. I'm going to put a link in the description or probably a card and endnote where you'll be able to see all of the things that you can do with it. And this is pretty, pretty lovely. Another tool, which is also totally free, you know, amazing to have is Bagapi. So we talked about Bagapi modifier within the week, and this is awesome. So it's a pretty interesting tool. It has been updated for Blender 3.0. It comes with a couple of nice improvements. And we're looking at scatter, the scatter effector. We're looking at scatter paint. We're looking at IV generator, you know, randomizations, arrays and all that. And all these things are done with the geometry node. And you can go over to the back end and play with this, fiddle with it and get some pretty nice things. One of the things that Bagapi now includes for those who would like to get the most out of it is the Bagapi asset. Now, lots of people do have very positive comments about it. And of course, if you'd like to get the free Bagapi modifier, you can get it. So this is a free tool. This is also a free one that you can get. And there is also more free stuff for you. So if you're looking for more free stuff, the folks at Pixar have just released the Render Man material for the holidays. So it is very interesting to see all of this procedural stuff, tileable ones. If you want to get this, they are very nice looking stuff. They are pretty. If you're using Pixar Render Man to render your stuff and you're looking for something pretty like this, you can go in and grab these ones. And with that said, for those thinking about getting even more free stuff, you can go over to Salvador's page. If you're looking for some rigs that you can tweak, play with, you know, you like to shake things up a bit, you can also check these ones out. They look pretty nice. All of these are free. You can grab them. And if you like to support him, you can also notice that he does have a cost. I believe this is in Spanish. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but you know, he has a cost here that you would be able to learn from. And while we talk about things that you can learn from and also rigs, the folks at Blender Studio have just announced the Blender Cloud Rig. Now, what is this? This is more like uh, an extended set of features that is now available with Blender Rigify add-on, and it looks pretty nice. Now, they currently do weekly live streams where they explain certain features and stuff, but for those who are already cloud members, you'll be able to get access with some of the things that you can find here. And to get up and running with that, they do have a section that deals with the Blender Studio tools, and you can find this tiny you know, video documentation that exists here where you can go through the intro, the rig types, and also the features. And of course, something else that you might want to look at is the motion graphics for Blender 3.0. So just in case you've been thinking about doing motion graphics, you might be intrigued about this. There is also a source file that you can grab for free, so do well to check them out. And finally, before we go, for those that are thinking about getting faster renders, you might want to consider K-Cycles as it is still having the 25% off. So we already know that, you know, the 25% period is over, but these guys are still keeping it. So just in case you want to get it, you can simply take a look at the link in the description and grab it. Meanwhile, the folks at R Animation just released the version two of their plant and nature asset. This is a high quality pack set. So just in case you're looking for high quality stuff, you might want to consider taking a look at these ones. There is a huge update that is now available and it just makes sense. For those that are thinking about, you know, playing with masks, playing with the altitude, how you can work with slopes and all that, this has been heavily updated 
and there are tons and tons of cool things that you can get out of it. So in case you're getting the ultimate one, you're getting about 800 plus assets and for the pro version, you're getting 400 and the light version gives you about 270 plus assets that you can work with. So it just makes sense to see that all of these things are right here and you can grab it. And while we talk about things that you can grab right here on Blender Market, they've also released a Flora add-on. It's a pretty nice add-on. I've not yet tested it, but this add-on comes with 160 assets. And these are the same folks that created the Blaze version 2 and also the Advanced Fire Shader. And it also makes sense to mention that Gata 5 is coming and it's coming in hot. For those who would like to pre-order this before it lands on the 17th of December, you can actually go in and check it out. There are sets of cool updates that is available and um, these are pretty nice things that i would suggest that you go in and check out so you like flores you get them you like saga you can get them and of course you can also proceed to get the k cycles so this is more like it for those who like to take a look at all of the things that we talked about link to this is going to be in the description so do well to check it out and of course if you like to support the channel you can simply go over to the patreon where you can support the channel and keep this going and of course if you're not subscribed to the channel what are you waiting for hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update and i see you guys in the next one peace